Thank you. Thank you so much. If you look around the room and you see people who are passing out booklets, uh, those booklets are tourism booklets. Those booklets bring economic development to our state. But it is a book called The Long Road to Liberty. And on the back of the book, you can get these books from travelok.com. Well, one of the things I want to share with you is, first of all, I want to say thank you. I'm very honored that you would allow me to come and share Muslim Day at the Capitol with you. Because I believe all Oklahomans have the right to work, to live, and to thrive. We're going to grow, and we're going to do great things together. So wherever you are, whenever it's time to stop and pray, you have the freedom and the liberty to do so. So I honor you and I thank you for allowing me to be here. These books are called The Long Road to Liberty. They are nice magazines. It is the depiction of African-American history in the state of Oklahoma. A lot of times we celebrate our history and we celebrate our culture, but it's always on a national scale. It's never about what Oklahoma does. So this book was born out of an idea and a concept. And for those of you who are educators, I have a copy of this particular law for you. This law was passed in 1999. And all I did was I simply took a copy of this law to the chairman of the House of Representatives. At that time, it was Representative Earl Sears from Bartlesville. And I said to him, because he was a retired uh, educator, a retired principal, and I said to him, how can we educate our children and how can we increase third grade reading level if some of the students in the state of Oklahoma don't have anything relevant to read? If there's nothing in the curriculum that looks like them, that's a positive story, not the story that you get on the news, how can we raise the bar of their reading comprehension if everything that they read, there's no one that looks like them? So I didn't want to talk about Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and all of the national icons that we know. What I did was I pulled a team together and it was the Oklahoma History Center, Debbie Snotgrass in tourism, and the State Department of Transportation so that they can look at the maps of everything that goes through Oklahoma so that they can document and list all black towns, so that they can list some of the history that the History Center has already collected. But right now, um, we were able to sit down and create a piece of legislation. It was House Bill 1979, and we did it in about 2010, 2011. So it took us a moment to get everything collected. So this particular book is free to the public. Don't let anybody um, tell you there's a cost to it because you as taxpayers already pay for the book. So on the back, you can go to travelok.com. You can click on brochures. You can scroll down to the fourth brochure on the left-hand side. You can click on Long Road to Liberty and put it in your cart. And then when you go to check out of your cart, you just put your name and address in there and we'll send you a copy of the book. Now there are pages in the book that fold out because there's places to go, things to see, and people to know in Oklahoma. The reason why I'm sharing this with you today is not because I want to enlighten you about African American history in the state of Oklahoma. The reason why I'm sharing this with you today is because I want you to have some vision. I want you to see that it took planning, it took collaboration, it took partnerships to get this done. But I want you to see into the future and I want you to be able to see a day in Oklahoma where we collect your history. We start telling positive stories about the significant things that you do in Oklahoma. Whether it's ICNA, whether it's the Mercy School, whether it's the mosques, wherever it is that you are doing good work, then it is imperative, it is paramount, 
And as your Islamic faith and your Islamic duty to be engaged in civic organizations and to give back to your communities, you already do that. But are you documenting it? So that when these young people of the next generation grow up, what are you going to have to show them about the significant contributions that you made to the great state of Oklahoma? So I'm suggesting to you that we get with uh, Adam Saltani and get with the CARE organization and you guys get you some privacy release forms together and start documenting that history. We'll pick a day in July or right after the Ramadan, after we've emptied ourselves and decided that we're gonna do something significant for someone else. It's okay to be successful, but move beyond success. Move your comfort zone beyond success, and you seem to know how to do that very well. Let's start documenting the good things that you do so that we can help educate the public based on a law that already exists. This law requires the state of Oklahoma to be inclusive whether it is Oklahoma's history or the United States history, US American history. So at the end of the day, we cannot report what our history is in the state of Oklahoma if we don't document it. If we don't share those positive stories, if we don't collect information, letters, pictures, stories of families, and what contributions they make to Oklahoma, then Oklahoma will never know how rich the history is. And the good news is, is that in my introduction, she told you that I was the former, the former Black Caucus chairman, but I also currently serve as the National Native American of State Legislators Vice Chairman. So people have to know that you embrace your culture, so how do I embrace my culture? Well, I have an Irish grandmother with fiery red hair, green eyes, and freckles, and I have a Native American grandmother who was born and raised in Oklahoma, but both of them married African American men. So who am I? I take pride in who I am and why I serve, and that is to give back. That is to be salt and light in Oklahoma. So that means if you take the time to document your history, then you don't have to convince your students to run for office. What a great day it would be to see that we can step out of our comfort zone and not have to focus on everything that makes us different. We can be diverse, but we don't have to be divided. So when you heard Sister Perkins talking, Sister Bailey Perkins talking about how you need to stay engaged, get connected. We can help you with that. We can talk about voter registration. We can talk about voter engagement. We can talk about activism and how to move things through the legislative process. This year, at the end of this year, I will retire. I've been in this building almost 20 years. I started out as a staffer, a media, Senate media staffer. And after seven years, I learned the legislative process. I resigned from a full-time job so that I could be your full-time legislator. So at the end of the day, I need you to see yourself holding this microphone. Because if you can't see it, you'll never see it. And if you don't see that the eyes of the future are upon us and they pray that we see past our time. So at the end of the day, I want you to make sure you become a part of the tapestry in Oklahoma that makes Oklahoma stronger. Together, we raise our voices. Together, Oklahoma's a better place. Together, Oklahoma rises. And we have to stand with one voice. That means you got to participate. That means you have to encourage the civic duty to continue. I teach representative democracy on Fridays. 
So I go to different companies, I go to different schools, I'm accessible, I'm available to you. But at the end of the day, my expectation is to see you engaged. If she tells you to put your feet behind the frustration, I'm telling you to raise your voice. So if I had to come in here and talk to a different culture, I would say, Masalto Alabanza, Alto Vos. I need your voice to stand tall. Your voice is your vote. If I needed to talk to you from a different culture or a Native American culture, then I would come to you and I would say, Ishtango. My name is Haichi Walika. I am running river water. And running river and water that's moving gives life to everything it touches. I need you to understand the significance of what you do Enjoy life in Oklahoma, but be a part of the changes that you want to see. And if we don't have your history, we don't get to teach it. If we don't teach it, we leave a cultural void in Oklahoma because the law says that it is our duty to teach and to be inclusive, to respect our diversity, but we cannot do that if we don't have a collective voice and a collective opportunity to do that. My second project, we are working on black Indians in Oklahoma because there are African Americans that are Native American as well. So we're doing a black oral history project in partnership with uh, different groups in the city. So if we send you a privacy release form and you all decide what organizations you want to be partners, then we can help you track and document that history. And it's not for show. It's not to say, oh, what a great uh, civic organization we have. It is to leave footprints for people to follow. So at the end of the day, I say to you, enjoy Muslim Day at the Capitol. Enjoy coming to this building because you are taxpayers. So don't let your religious beliefs be a hindrance to your civic activity. Make sure you stay engaged, get connected, ask questions, and we will make ourselves available to help you through the legislative process. Get registered to vote, but don't just vote, get active. Don't just get active, elect to run for office. Do something greater than yourselves, and don't be afraid to fail. You have to go through all your no's to get to your one yes. And somebody's gotta be able to tell you that you can do it. I'm here for you. Thank you so very much. God bless you. <laughs> I'm gonna leave these